Hi, my name is Camille from Predator Education and in this video I'll be doing a short explainer on how to consent a patient for a colonoscopy. Before consenting the patient, ensure you fully understand the procedure yourself and can answer any questions the patient potentially may have. In good medical practice, the person or endoscopist performing the procedure should consent the patient. Ensure you are speaking to the correct patient by checking at least three identifiers. For example, the name, the date of birth, the NHS number, and also their postcode. You can split the explanation into a few short sections that will help you to cover all of the basics. Start by explaining the indication for the procedure. Why is the patient going for a colonoscopy? Secondly, talk through the practicalities of the procedure, what will happen during the procedure, how long it will last, what is the scope like, etc. Are there any prophylactic antibiotics to take? Is there any pain relief, sedation, etc.? What are the benefits of the procedure? This is something, of course, you must discuss with the patient. Risk profile is also very, very important to discuss with the patient. Preparation, how should they prep leading up to this procedure? Any aftercare from the procedure? And also finally, safety netting, what the patient should look out for, any red flags. Indication, the commonest indications for a colonoscopy in the outpatient settings include a change in the habits or suspicion of bowel cancer. Iron deficiency anemia should also be investigated with men. Inflammatory bowel disease visualization of the large colon can be done via colonoscopy. So this is also a common indication for the procedure. Practical elements, explain to the patient the procedure will last approximately 25 minutes, whereas thin long tube is inserted into the rectum with lubrication to visualize the large bowel. Often air is also inflated into the bowel to open up the large bowel so we can have a better image. We potentially look for any areas of inflammation, any polyps, any area of diverticula. We also look for any areas of potentially cancers as well. Benefits of the procedure are diagnostic as well as treatment of any lower GI issues which I've already discussed such as cancers, polyps and diverticular disease. A lot of patients require colonoscopies for monitoring of their inflammatory bowel disease as well, Crohn's and colitis patients. Risks of the procedure include injury, perforation, bleeding and infection. Preparation for the procedure normally starts the day before of the procedure with laxatives, bowel prep to ensure the large bowel is empty to allow the scope to get a good visualization of the large bowel. Post procedure, we commonly recommend for the patient to be observed for 24 hours at home with family or friends if in the outpatient setting. In terms of safety netting, it is very important if the patient develops severe pain in the abdomen, vomiting or blood in the stool to seek immediate medical attention. For the consent to be valid, ensure the patient has capacity for consent. And you can remind yourself by watching our previous video on the important principles of capacity. As always, important resources and references are included in the description. We'll see you on the next one.